Uh, good morning, Greg. Uh, I, this is Jack Lifton again. And uh, today I'm interviewing uh, Greg Andrews, the CEO of Search Minerals. Good morning, Jack. Uh, Greg, before we start, I, I want to make a point. I've been reviewing your company's public information, and I I was quite impressed by by stuff I read on your website about your direct conversion metallurgy, hydrometallurgy. And I just want to tell uh, everyone that I give a seminar on rare earth processing every couple of couple of years, and um, uh, this last June when I did it. I called Dr. Bruce Moore of, of, Oak, of U.S. Uh, Oak Ridge National Laboratory and asked him to find for me a general information paper on uh, solvent extraction that the audience, could, my audience is typically a few chemical engineers are mostly businessmen. So he recommended a paper by uh, Dreisinger from 2013. And I looked at it and I said, wow, this is wonderful. Uh, because it, it's so clear, and if you don't understand it, maybe you shouldn't be in the business. So I used it and handed it out, and you know, it got, it got a lot of reviews. And I didn't think about it again until yesterday when I was reviewing your company's information and found out that Dr. Reisinger is, I believe, a, a board member. And not only, not only that, he's designed a very clever front end process for, for your uh, mine. And I was going to ask you things about grades and minerals, but now I don't have to, because I see what you're doing. It's what it's what I really think uh, junior miners should do, which is to understand what their deliverable is to the next level in the supply chain. Uh, congratulations, Greg! You're the first junior I've ever talked to that actually. Uh, agrees with me and did that, and I th I think what you're going to deliver to XS process uh, SX processing uh, is exactly correct uh, to make a PLS. It's perfect. So uh, uh, it's a great business model. Congratulations! Uh, now, now that I've talked so much, can you please tell us more about what what your company is doing right now and where you are in your uh, development? Well, thank you, Jack. And one thing I would I would say is when we started off in this business back in 2010, 2011 with everybody else, and Dr. Dreisinger has been with us since day one, and he is a board member. And, um, you know, we, we, we recognized at that time that capital costs was going to be the key driver of what projects are going to move forward. And so when we started off with our, uh, with our resource and finding our product, it was a unique resource in that um, you know, it was uh, hasn't hadn't been seen before in terms of the the type of resource carrying with alanine, fergusonite, and whatnot. And so we started off with the normal um, uh, flow sheet, traditional flow sheet. And David Reisinger then that's when he tried something unique in that he eliminated the uh, the grinding, flotation, magnetic, and separation um, beneficiation. Mm -hmm. Issues. So that was what really started our process to make our project more economic with low capital costs so that we could be a scalable technology, start small and grow big. And that's what we've started back in 2010 when there was uh, when when we first got in this game. Well, that that was the exactly correct <laughs> business model as far as I'm concerned. And, and um, I I was not aware of what you're doing. And I, uh, you know, I obviously uh, there, there's a there's a fantasy among uh, junior miners that someone can come and look at a at some operation and suddenly understand it. Well, I, I looked at the flow sheet on your website and I, I, I do understand it. I understand what's going on here. Doesn't matter what the details are. The the plan is first class. And if you can deliver sufficient uh 99.8% uh, total rare earths as chlorides to uh, to the uh, to the next stage in the supply chain well that's that's exactly what they want and and you're going to get a much better price for for your for your PLS ready concentrate than people who produce a mixed con I love that nonsense term okay because it's worthless mixed con 
but your stuff is first class. So um, what are your target dates and how much, wh what do you, how much do you expect to produce uh, uh, annually and when? Our, our production rate right now, Jack, what we're looking to do is we've completed um, two pilot plants. We completed um, uh, what, the $1.9 million pilot plant. We're just finishing off our optimization. And what we're looking for is, again, to tweak tweak those capital costs and, and get the operating costs down. Our next steps would then to build a demonstration plant. And we're hoping mm -hmm. to initiate uh, that. And we're looking at doing about a 1-100 scale of that. And uh, the, the key thing there, again, is to be able to deliver more product for the companies, uh, refineries to go down further and get into the offtake sort of discussions that are, are quite needed now. Um, our, our quantities on a thousand tons per day, you could see, was about 3,200 um, uh, tons of mixed rare earth. It is mixed rare earth concentrate right now, but we can change that to be the chlorides or whatever we need in our process uh, to suit the market. But that, that was the measurement that we started with. Um, and that's at 1,000 tons per day. But we, we look with our deep fox addition that we can expand that now to increase that to 1,500 tons to, per day to 2,000 tons per day, which, of course, will you know, multiply that number you know, 6,500 to 7,000 tons per year. Okay, of, of net of total rare earths. Yeah. Uh, I see that you don't have the distribution of rare earths in your deposit on your website. Can you give us some idea of, of what um, what's in it, what, which rare earths you'd be supplying? Yeah, once again, we're blessed with our deposit in that we can c carry both, um, the, mainly the permanent magnet um, uh, elements, uh, neodymium, praseodymium, and a mix of dysposium and terbium. So on 1,000 right. tons per day, uh, production with the 3,200 tons per year, we would produce about 650 tons of neodymium presidium, uh, praseodymium, sorry, and right. about 50 tons of dysposium and 10 tons of terbium. So it's quite a surprising mix when when people start to look at at our composition to see that we can supply uh, supply all those four elements. All right. In your um, uh, final step in in your flow sheet. Uh, where you showed 98% uh, uh, total rare earth uh, product. Is that the, composi the composition, uh, uh, that composition delivered would give 660 tons of neodymium, praseodymium, and 50 and 20 of dysprosium terbium? Is that what you're saying? That's correct. Okay. Look, that would be exactly, exactly what the U.S. Department of Defense thinks they need per year. Okay. Now, uh, as I'm going to segue here for a second, I was asked today uh, why why Canada is not uh, actively participating in the U.S. current U.S. Uh, in, interest in re reviving a, a domestic uh, rare earth supply chain. My answer was simple. Yesterday, the the Secretary of Commerce of the U.S. met with his counterpart physically in Washington, the uh, Australian Minister of Resources. And what are they talking about? Critical metals and rare earths. Okay. And a lot of money is being, the, the Australian government has committed to billions of dollars into their resource sector to get the rare earths and other critical metals up, up and running. Okay. Now, I, I, I go to the Canada and I hear a lot of crickets. Okay. So I, what I'm asking you, I read on your, on your website that you have very good relations with both the federal and provincial governments uh, of Canada on, on your project as it should be, because your project seems to me to be, excuse the expression, shovel ready. Okay. So uh, I'm wondering, Greg, what's your opinion on why the Canadian government isn't doing more? That's a simple answer. The Australians are really pushing this, and why are, is the? Uh, I did a study years ago, and I can tell you that most of the deposits undeveloped on this planet are in Canada, and of those, half of them are in Quebec and where you are, a little farther east, uh, Labrador. So, um, what's going on, Greg? What's your opinion? Well, I can say that um, with with the government fundings that we've been getting, we, our our funding with the provincial and federal governments have been for our pilot plant with a co-op, mm -hmm. which is Atlantic Canada Opportunity Agency, and Innovate NL, which is provincial. 
But on the on, we also work with NRCAN, and that's the the federal division, uh, and we're working with them. And and we, you know, I know that they're talking. They they've been into Washington and and been in those boardrooms and talking and and being representation of us, you know, Canada's contribution. Um, and maybe we're just uh, not pushing hard enough and being vocal enough. And uh, we just have to continue that because it's certainly uh, very timely. And, you know, we have participated in the, um, we have uh, participated in the uh, request for information to the U.S. back in July. So they're they're well aware of search and and search uh, is deemed a domestic supply under that uh, Defense uh, Protection Act. So so we qualify for that to make sure. And right. uh, yeah, so it's very positive in what we're trying to move forward to. And we, we have to continue to engage our Canadian government. We have very strong support at the provincial level. And I know they're engaging with their counterparts in the federal um, the, the federal part of the um, government also. I'm interested in also in the fact that your pilot plant or demonstration plant at uh, 1% of the total output projected is exactly what chemical engineers require when they're proving a concept with a pilot plant. Uh, I congratulate you because you're the first junior miner I have ever met, honestly, that knows that. I keep I, I, People keep telling me, well, I made three grams in the laboratory. And I say, so what? Okay, your, your plant up is 3,000 tons. You need to show me a 30 ton plus Plant, a pilot plant. Then I'm, I'm, then I'm not concerned anymore about scale up. They go, huh? Well, you are obviously ahead of me, and I, I suspect Greisinger is involved in this also. But that's, that's good. That's good work. So you're doing everything right. And uh, where, where do you, are you, are you in the process of raising capital? That's a silly question to a junior. Uh, yeah. So you know. Um, where we're at now, Jack, is, um, you know, a couple months ago, we were simply a company that had the Foxtrot resource, which was a 14-year life mine, eight years, open pit, six underground. And um, we've been working on our project, Deep Fox, which we were able to uh, create a resource out of only drilling down to 100 meters um, mm -hmm. and spending a million dollars. So what that has done for us is added more material so that we can update our PEA, and that, that's allowing us to increase the production rate, which allows us to have better economies of scale. So that's really been in the last you know couple months, like I say, is kind of the new beginning of search of really identifying this district. Two resources within close proximity in a district that's 70 kilometers long. And that's all led by Dr. Randy Miller and his team, another mm -hmm. PhD who has been with us since day one that's leading the charge on the, re the resource. Um, so that's that's what's really got us focused that we can now uh, look at those economics and really enhance this district and and build it out. When do you expect this revised PEA to be uh, done? Uh, we're going to probably look for that uh, later in the year, probably the third quarter next year. And the reason that we want to do that is with the re the drilling only down to 100 meters, even though it's mm -hmm. a resource, going down to 200 meters on 600,000 for $600,000 um, is is quite significant in changing the economics, um, mm -hmm. and, which is important. That was the plan. And so so uh, th that's exactly what we're going to do, increase the, uh, increase the resource and then do the PEA. Good. Assuming that you can raise the necessary capital, when do you expect to have production? In the in the perfect world, we would say probably mm. three years for a decision to build and one year to build. Okay. So okay. four years. Well, look, I, I think that you've been flying under my radar anyway, and I'm now going to follow your company very closely because I think you're I think you're doing everything right. That, that, and and uh, I would say it's amazing, but it, the amazing part is that I I didn't know it. Not you know you, you've been working, and uh, congratulations uh, on that. And I, I wish you the best of luck. And I certainly am going to follow your developments. And I I really look forward to when Dreisinger publishes a paper so I can read what that process is. Thank okay. You. Well, well, Jack, what, one thing I will comment on is we were working hard, like the pilot plant was in 2006 and 2000, or 2016 and 17, when no yeah. one was really working in rare earths, but we can, we have such a great deposit in technology, we continued to work and that, and that's paying off the dividends now. Uh, I, I'll tell you something that puts you in the, the same class as uh, Linus, for example, 
and even Northern Minerals. Both of them were continued slogging through, and at, at times when they were they were looking to see if the sheriff was coming with the with the quit notice. So, good yeah. uh, congratulations again. Good luck. Thank you, Jack.